of and criticised for doing things which he felt were happening throughout the Conservative Party. People were taking money for arms deals, that government ministers were engaged in corrupt practices, and that MPs were taking money to perform favours in Parliament. There was an increasingly corrupt relationship between Parliament and business, which allowed business to bend Parliament to its will. In 1990, Mrs Thatcher was forced out as leader of the Conservative Party. She was succeeded by John Major. He saw himself as a strong man who was going to reassert control over the markets. Above all, he wanted to prevent the damaging fluctuations in the value of the pound. His solution was to take Britain into what was called the exchange rate mechanism. The value of the pound was fixed to Europe's strongest currency, the Deutschmark. It would no longer be at the mercy of the currency speculators. All my adult life, I've seen British governments driven off their virtuous pursuit of low inflation by market problems or political pressures. I was under no illusions when I took Britain into the exchange rate mechanism. I said at the time that membership was no soft option, the soft option, the devaluer's option, the inflationary option, in my judgment, that would be a betrayal of our future at this moment. And I tell you categorically, that is not the government's policy. The currency markets decided to take on the British government. They deliberately set out to force John Major to devalue and to leave the exchange rate mechanism. It was to be a defining battle over who really now controlled Britain's economy the government or the markets. The markets also knew that if they succeeded, they would make a fortune. They began by selling billions of pounds on the foreign exchanges. It was incredible. I mean, obviously you can hear what's going on in the market and you can hear wave after wave of selling hitting the market, being met with resistance and support by the Bank of England. They were buying such a phenomenal amount of pounds. The only thing the government could do was to tell the Bank of England to raise interest rates. But the markets knew that this was an act of desperation. We had a fairly strong sense that we were on to the kill. It indicated to us uh, that uh, we are in uh, the, at the end game, that there was no, you know, this was an act of desperation. So instead of restraining us, it was really an invitation uh, to, to, to double up, to try to sell as much more as possible. So uh, that afternoon, it became a veritable uh, uh, avalanche. A single government, like the British government, uh, has practically no power in resisting these global powers. Suddenly the Bank of England wasn't supporting pounds. Instead of a load of noise coming out of the voice brokers and everything and around the dealing room, everyone just sat in stunned silence for about two seconds or three seconds and all of a sudden it erupted and Sterling just free fell. That sense of awe that the markets could take on a central bank and actually win. I couldn't believe it. So how many pounds have you sold? About half a billion. Half a billion. So has it been good business? Yeah, it's been really good. What does that mean to the bank here? Um, we've had a, an excellent day, we've made a lot of money. So it's good. What are we talking about, a couple of hundred thousand pounds? Uh, probably about 10 million. To James Goldsmith, this was the evidence that the apocalypse was indeed happening. The global markets were destroying governments. Their next step in world domination, he believed, were the free trade treaties like GATT and the Maastricht Agreement on Europe. These treaties were being forced on governments by corporations who in turn were under pressure from the greedy markets. The treaties would give the corporations the freedom to move their factories to wherever labour was cheapest. In the process, the treaties would destroy national identities and governments. Who benefits? I'll tell you who benefits. Well, they'll say... I'll, well, I'll tell you who benefits. Let me give you the facts. 
The facts are the people who benefit are the big major corporations. There's a divorce between the interests of major corporations and of society. Now, how do they operate? They're no longer linked to the United States, the American ones, or to France, or to Britain. They operate by farming out their production to whatever country produces the cheapest labor, wherever they can get the biggest return on capital and pay the lowest part to labor. We will create, on a scale unheard of, mass migration. What we saw in Rwanda, two million people will be nothing. So as to satisfy an economic doctrine. And the result is we are destroying our, the stability of our societies because we are worshiping the wrong god, economic index. So it all began to fit together into a very clear picture for him where everything that had happened since the 15th century, all the economic theories, all the enlightenment theories, all the renaissance theories, had all come together to create a false economic system. Goldsmith now decided to make a stand against the forces of globalism. At the end of 1994, he returned to Britain to announce he was forming his own political party. It had one aim. It would fight at the next general election to force a referendum on the Maastricht Treaty. He was going to give those who didn't want to be ruled by a global business elite the chance to reassert their national identity. I will help them. I will guarantee that they have the infrastructure to put forward one candidate in each constituency. And I will guarantee that that party will be funded as well as any other political party to be able to fight that campaign, have a 30-day life, put through the referendum, and then resign. Goldsmith's announcement caused a sensation. It was seen as a direct attempt to destroy the Conservative vote at the next election. And that very same month, the major government received another body blow from a vengeful tycoon. From their old ally and supporter, Mohammed al fayed a government minister resigns over the cash for questions allegations. Tim Smith admitted he accepted money from the owner of Harrods to ask questions in the Commons. The second minister, Neil Hamilton, denies the allegations and is suing for libel. Doesn't it just show the present frenzy of ludicrous rumours that are sweeping around? John Major sacks his trade minister, Neil Hamilton, and sets up an inquiry into standards of conduct in public office. I shall, of course, be registering the biscuit in the register of members in Fired had been furious when the government refused to give him a British passport. In revenge, he revealed to The Guardian how he had given gifts and money to MPs. Fired now portrayed himself as a noble fighter against the corruption of Parliament. And this is a gift for me. He conveniently forgot that he had been one of those who had tempted MPs. Have a nice The corruption of the political system and the corruption of the people have kidnapped those parties and change them and change their principles, right? Because those parties before 30, 40 years ago was ruled by decent and honorable people. But I am ashamed that such a great country and such a great people can just only put trash people to lead them and to guide them, right? Major's government was rocked by Fayyad's revelations. Many of the MPs he had paid and given gifts to had by now become ministers. It showed just how deeply business had penetrated into the heart of politics. And it was a process that was out of control. Even the man who had started it all had become worried. I think it became very greedy. Um, and advantage taking was very much the order of the day. Um, uh, by a substantial number of members of parliament. I, I can remember becoming deeply concerned about this whole um, attitude, the attitude of so many members, that I went to see the chief whip um, with the chairman of the 1922 committee, uh, the Tory backbench parliamentary committee, um, to say to him, I think that a lot of conservative members of parliament are getting out of control. I think they are beginning to actually demonstrate signs of going over the top. It was also a triumphant moment for Tiny Rowland. He had begun the chain of events that had forced Fired into his angry exposure of government corruption. 